This time on Animal Airport, four big cats cause one enormous headache. I still can't find it. We've got a problem. Sharon's on the trail of an illegal bulldog. At the moment, I'm going to have to detain him because he's illegal. And Stuart must get to grips with the reception centre's grumpy resident crocodile. He's a little bit feisty, this one. With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. As well as 65 million human passengers, each year, around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Centre, affectionately known as the Ark. It's 8.30 a.m. and Animal Health Officer Chris is on a routine pickup. Three cats, hopefully, on board. Much of the reception centre's work involves domestic dogs and cats. But today, the staff at the Ark have received news of a very unusual arrival. Just off a flight from Johannesburg, South Africa, some very special cats. Are they cubs? Mm. Four. Apparently, four cheetah cubs. Oh, we get big cats uh, a few times a year, really. It's a bit of a treat for us. Four cheetahs need to stop off at the Ark before a connecting flight to Moscow and their new home in a Russian zoo. Coming in at all, so to come in uh, on shift and yeah, right. be told to expect four, four cheetahs. Um, it's quite special. The cheetahs are scheduled to fly on to Moscow in a few hours' time, but they need their IDs and paperwork checked before they'll be allowed to board their plane. Deputy Manager Susie tries a range of different readers in an attempt to check the cheetahs' microchips. I want to read the microchips through the boxes, which is um, a real long shot, to be honest, because the microchips are between the shoulder blades and the chip readers just won't, won't scan at that sort of range through this material, it seems. Um, but it's worth a try, because otherwise we're going to have to release them into this crush cage, and that's going to be slightly hazardous for us and also really stressful for the animals, so if we can, we'll avoid it. Um, it's not looking good. At Terminal 4, Animal Health Officer Anna is off to carry out a routine check on a dog that's just made a transatlantic crossing from New York. We're on our way to a flight. We have an assistance dog, um, so we're going to go and make sure all the paperwork complies to the, the UK. Around 8,000 dogs pass through Heathrow each year, the vast majority travelling in crates in an aircraft's hold, but some travel in the cabin with their owners. They would be things like guide dogs for the blind, um, deaf dogs, dogs for epileptics, diabetics, things like that. The passenger Anna's about to meet has an emotional support animal. Hi, I'm from the Animal Reception Centre. I believe there's a, an assistance dog on the plane with a passenger. Thank you. To enable her to cope with flying, her dog's been allowed to travel with her in the cabin. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> We've already had pre-approval uh, paperwork of the dog coming through, so I'm just going to scan the dog, make sure the microchip is correct to the paperwork that we've got here. Once all the other passengers have left the aircraft, Anna can check that Missy, the assistant's pet, matches her paperwork. How was your flight? We're exhausted. Yeah? She was really good. I think I'm more, more. <laughs> than the dog. I'm worried because I feel like it's a long time before being able to use their you know, go to the bathroom. Yeah. She doesn't seem to be having any problems. Yeah. Mrs. Job is complete. She's kept her owner company on the flight. OK, that's us done. Say thank you, Missy. Thank Bye, you. Missy. Thank you. All done. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
Yeah, it went well. Um, all the paperwork was there, everything was correct. So that was quite a quick process. Checked everything, everything's fine, so they can now get on their way. It's not going so smoothly with the cheetahs. Deputy manager Susie is still struggling to locate their microchips. The only way in is through the back door, which has no mesh behind it. So what I want to do is lift it up, get a piece of mesh behind it and enough room for the chip readers. But we're going to need some body weight. Plan A, open the cages just slightly to get better access without letting the cheetahs escape. He's biting it. <laughs> is he biting it? He's literally playing tug of war with me. Plan B, right, distract okay, the cheetah with a second chip reader. OK, chew this, chew this. That's a very expensive microchip reader. I tell you what, it's not going to work four times. No. The problem what we've got is that the cheetah is just grabbing and actually biting and holding onto the chip reader. And the, the microchip should be on top between the shoulder blades. So every time I put the chip reader in, he bites it and I can't get it over the top of his head. Plan C, see if a tin of dog food will be more tempting than a chew on the chip reader. This is kind of the last ditch attempt, anything to avoid getting them out because it's, it's stress for them and, and obviously it's dangerous for us. What's this? What's this? This is no average cheetah food. At last, some success. One down, three to go. But the dog food trick isn't working on all of them. Just can't find the microchip. <laughs> this could take some time. Maybe they should try cat food. It's time for Apprentice Lloyd to get his first lesson in crocodile catching. Normally, he'll go under his little, his little bed and we can keep him in there to clean him out, yeah. but it's such a mess, um, we're going to have to get him out. So I thought you'd like to watch and see how we yes. do it. Are you dog catching or am I? I will let you dog catch. And you're grabbing? And I will... Uh, Great, thanks. Where is he? This West African dwarf crocodile has been a resident at the Ark for more than a year. He's a little bit feisty, this one, so you need to be shifty on your toes. This crocodile was moved from a zoo because he kept fighting with another crocodile. Dog catch is generally the best way without injuring him at all. While he waits to be rehomed, he's used to train ARC staff and police in how to handle dangerous animals safely. All right, mate, whenever you're ready. Yep. So the idea, Lloyd, is basically get all your weight on him and then slowly move your hand up his jaw because, obviously, for him to open his jaw, he hasn't really got that much muscle. It's all to close it. So you're covering up his eyes as well to make him a little bit more docile. Most of a crocodile's power is on its downbite. It's much harder for them to open their jaws when they're held shut. What he'll do is he'll put his fingers underneath the jawline. And what he has to be careful of is because they'll sit all quiet and then just suddenly have a big burst of energy. So he can't be too complacent because it'll be him that gets bitten, not us. It's not going to go anywhere. Nevertheless, the quicker Stuart can clean out the enclosure, the better. Stinks. Chris looks half man, half croc as he holds on tight. We're ready, mate. Releasing the crocodile is tricky. Chris must avoid its powerful bite. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we didn't lose any fingers and toes on that one. No, it's good. It's All done. Clean out. Awesome, mate.
two of the cheetahs have now had their microchips located and are cleared to travel on to Moscow. But the team still can't find chips on the other two, and they have to stay behind. Now, even though it's risky, they must remove them from their crates. We're going to release the animal into the race between the two crush cages, hold it in there, and then we'll be able to poke the chip reader right through onto its back. And then if we still can't find it, we've got a problem. The team only has a few hours before the flight to Moscow leaves. They need to move quickly if these cheetahs are going to be on board. The first cheetah's box is lined up next to the trapdoor of what's called the crush cage. Now access to the cheetah's microchip should be straightforward. Right, let's slide that closed. The first cheetah, a male, seems to be cooperating. Hold this one down. She's being very well behaved at the moment. But still no joy finding the chip. It's looking less likely that it's actually got a readable chip in it. After 10 minutes, they give up on the large male cheetah and try their luck with the female. She's suspicious. Susie searches every part she can reach, to no avail. I'm not sure what's going to happen next. She gives it one more try. But the cheetah's getting stressed. The last thing the team need is an angry big cat. At the animal reception center, dogs and cats have been coming through all morning. Anne and Kaylee are off to box up a Staffordshire Bull Terrier that's flying to Copenhagen. She's probably the youngest animal passenger of the day. Oh, so sweet. This is uh, hopefully stress relieving for a puppy. <laughs> the puppy, Jan, has been bred in the UK and picked and is being shipped off to a new owner on the continent. Oh, you're beautiful, aren't you? Yeah. So long as a dog is over eight weeks old and has the right jabs and paperwork, it's allowed to fly. <laughs> but Anne needs to make sure that Jan's not a Staffordshire Bull Terrierist. Um, do a hand search of the box to make sure that there's no um, bombs or firearms or anything in there. There's no hidden compartments or anything in the box, so, so she's ready to go in. Aren't you? Oh, there you go. Come on in. <laughs> That's it, good girl. Nice comfy bed. Jan should have a comfortable flight and seems more than happy to leave. Bye -bye, Jim. Which is more than can be said for the staff. Really sad, really sad, so sweet. I mean, we do get a lot of sweethearts in here, but some of the dogs are basically, they don't want to be handled. They just want to go in, sleep, and then go back out again. But when they want to be handled, it's just so fun. Oh, I love it. The ARC staff don't just process animals flying in and out of the airport. Apprentice Lloyd and animal health inspector Sharon are heading to South London. They've been given a tip-off about an illegal dog. We've had a report that um, one of the RSPCA vets has seen a dog that they suspect has been illegally imported into the UK, so we're going to go um, visit the owner and investigate and see if the dog has been illegally imported. For the dog's owners, Sharon and Lloyd will be surprise visitors. We don't let people know that we're coming when we do illegals. We don't, we don't want any flight risk. Oh, 
my name is I'm Sharon Edwards. I'm an animal health inspector in oh, the city yeah, of London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She told us about to it. Sharon's relief, the man is willing to talk. Well, how did you acquire this dog? Um, I, was, I was looking at the uh, internet. Yeah. This dog was advertised. And uh, I liked the price, so I went to, and saw it once. I left her £60 for deposit. Yeah. And then uh, a week later, I went with the rest of the money and I got the dog. OK. So, so at the moment, uh, we have to decide what's the best thing for, the dog. for your dog. The owner bought the dog from a woman he didn't know and picked it up from a railway station. The dog is here illegally because to come legally he would have had to have a blood test. Yeah, that's what the vet And said. he wouldn't have been able to come in for six months after the blood test. It, at the moment I'm going to have to detain him because really? he's illegal. Oh, yeah. You, rem is, you remain is... the owner of him at all times, OK? okay. The dog's been brought in from Lithuania. Sharon wonders if there's a way of saving its new owner's a large quarantine bill. Where, where do you this come from? Algeria. Yeah. OK. But the dogs didn't come from Algeria. No, 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 I know, but sometimes if there's, a, if there's a third country we can send them back to, it's a cheaper option than putting them into kennels in this country. I'm just trying to think of options so, to help you. No, well, this, you're not helping here at okay, all. OK, well... Because, uh, you know... I, I, so, so uh, my £500 gone in a bin, basically. That, so I just burned the money. That's, that's, it. A, that's Because the woman, if she's coming to collect her dog tomorrow... The owner's less than happy that his dogs turned out to be an illegal import. That's the, uh, Can I just let the boys say goodbye to you? Do you think that's... You know, we, I, did, I really think that's the wrong idea. They can start crying now, I'm going to lose it. Lloyd, do you want to pop him in? I will come back and take a statement from you, and a, f a formal statement like the police take. I, I have the same powers as the police do under this legislation, so we we I will carry out a formal investigation. The family now faces a quarantine bill of several hundred pounds. If they can't pay, Rex must either be sent back to Lithuania or destroyed. I think it's something that you need to talk about once we've left. Rex is officially detained. I don't believe these people imported it, um, so we're going to have to carry out further investigations. So you do feel a bit sorry for these owners. They made the classic error of buying a puppy from an advert they saw on the internet. It just goes to prove that it, when you buy a puppy, you should only go to reputable places and know what the parentage is of these puppies. At the animal reception centre, the situation with the cheetahs is becoming more problematic. There's two cheetahs which should have gone on 12.30 um, and now not going because Moscow have not okayed it. So the, the nearest flight now is tomorrow morning at 8.40. So, um, yeah, so it looks like we're going to have to release them, but I don't know where. <laughs> Just a bit of a nightmare. Just leaving them in there for a minute. Yeah, I'm not doing anything with them. Arc manager Rob and animal health officer Stuart now face a real dilemma. They left here, got to the aircraft, and BA uh, refused to load them because Moscow has uh, said that they won't allow just two of the cats to go into Russia. They want all four to go together. They won't allow a split shipment, which is going to cause us problems. They've been in their boxes, well, probably over 48 hours now, so we're going to have to let them out. The only issue is we've only got two crush cages, which are the safe places to put them. They'll have to house two of the cheetahs in cages which aren't designed to hold them. Some cheetahs can be safe enough to handle, but which to choose? Just in case it doesn't go right. With their claws, they, they don't retract these claws, they stay out. So they'll even a playful slap from them will cause injuries. And obviously they've got huge canines, because they used to be taking down young gazelle and stuff. So they are quite formidable if they want to be. I've had rear cheetahs um, before and uh, I've nursed them all the way up to adulthood, so um, most big cats I've got some experience with. These big cats could take Stuart well out of his comfort zone. Rex the Bulldog is back at the Ark. Sharon's assessing the options he now faces. If his owners can't afford the cost of quarantine, <laughs> they may have to give up their ownership. <laughs> Rex's future is uncertain. If nobody will come forward and pay for him to go into quarantine or re-export him back to Lithuania, then we have no option other than to order his destruction. 
he might be euthanase. We don't like to euthanase anything. It was always the last resort, but sometimes it's the only option left to us. In a few days, a decision will have to be made. With four cheetahs to house, Stuart and Rob are organising which will go where. They need to keep the most dangerous ones, including this female, in the crush cages designed to house challenging big cats. But one of the males is much less aggressive. In my opinion, he's quite placid and been, I think been hand-reared. Stuart's decided the large male will be the easiest to move, but it's risky. You'll have to walk the cheetah across the room to the other cage. They prepare for every eventuality. Rob's going to have a broom for me, and we've got a CO2 fire extinguisher, which will scare him anyway. I've got the fun job of putting the lead on him. I've got a broom just to sweep up the pieces. So my pieces. <laughs> Come on, in, mate. It looks like Stuart made the right call as the male cheetah accepts being put onto a lead. The only problem is, he's still not going anywhere. You're better off a lead, just being, just being guided. Perhaps the cheetah will cooperate better without a lead. It's a tense moment. You're a good boy. Yeah. With the large male moved, the other two can be released from their crates. And down again, lovely. Good boy. Right. The ark rarely has big cats staying over. For the staff, it's a treat. Oh, it's just phenomenal. This is what makes this job, days like this. Oh, it just makes my heart feel gorgeous. It's a cheetah! <laughs> These cheetahs may be a novelty, but they're also a headache. Now they're detained as an illegal shipment, getting them to Russia could be a long process. There's good news for Rex the Bulldog. A charity agreed to pay his quarantine bill, and after four months, he was reunited with the family that bought him. Jan, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier puppy, is happy living with her new owners in Copenhagen. And the cheetahs have settled in for an extended stay. On a diet of fine steak, they're threatening to eat the ark out of house and home.